Good morning. It is Sunday morning, November 8th. It is the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. In our gospel lesson for this day, Jesus tells a parable about wise and foolish bridesmaids who are waiting for the bridegroom to come. Even so, we wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to come into our hearts and into our lives each and every day of our lives. I invite you to prepare yourselves for worship this morning as we share together the order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door for us. Through Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. I invite you to join in singing the hymn for this day, opening hymn, O God, our help in ages past. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
The Holy Gospel for this day is the Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout. Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I don't know about you, but I have uh, some things that I do pretty much every day in the morning when I get up. I make myself a cup of coffee, and, and then I usually go sit on the porch, and, and I have my cell phone with me, or, or I'll sit at the computer, and I go to, we don't get a newspaper, and to get the news, I, I pull up Google, and I go to the Google News, and I just scroll down on Google News to see what's new, if there's anything new today. And what I've lately become uh, regular doing is I skip through all the news that's about politics in the world because that just becomes way too much. I, I skip down to the other stuff that's usually at the bottom. And I especially like watching the stuff about science, science news. What are some new things happening in science? And I particularly enjoy reading articles about uh, what's going on with our uh, with outer space, you know, if there's anything new about a new asteroid or new discoveries about the sun or other planets, I'm, I'm particularly interested in, in those. One time I remember I was, I was going through the news and, and there was a picture about Mars. You know, NASA has this, has this rover thing that they had shot up and it's on Mars and it goes wheeling around. It was taking a bunch of pictures of the landscape around Mars. And the headline caught my attention, is there life discovered on Mars, and, and I clicked on it, and I saw these pictures that were there of images that the, that the Voyager, you know, that had, was take, taken on the, on the landscape of Mars, images that appeared to look as if they, maybe someone might be there, you know, images that suggested that there was um, some man-made objects there. One image in particular I looked at, I thought, wow, that really does look like it says, could this be a statue? And it really does look. If you look at the image, it looks like it's a statue. And I thought, wow, that's pretty amazing. And then I thought, well, you know, it's probably just the way the wind blows and blows the dirt. But, you know, our minds are like that. We, we want to make sense out of things. And in particular, we want to make sense out of those things that, that nobody understands. You know, that seem so far away and so distant. We want to, we, our minds are always working to try and figure out, could it be? Could it be this? Could it be that? In our gospel lesson today, Jesus is uh, walking along with his, his disciples in, in, in Jerusalem, and, and the disciples look up at the, at the temple, and they're amazed by the temple. Wow, look at this building, how great it is it? And Jesus said to them, I tell you, you think this building is something? The day is coming soon when not one stone on this temple will be left standing on top of another. And that's when the Son of Man will come at the end of the age, he says, Right? And the disciples later come to them and they're thinking, whoa, it's like they just got a glimpse into the outer space, the end of the age. What is that like? And they, and they want to know, just like I wanted to know what's going on on Mars. They want to know, well, when is this happening? The end of the age and what is it going to be like? And so Jesus, as he always does, instead of directly answering the question with specifics, he tells them a story. He tells them a parable. And the parable he tells them is about a, uh, a wedding that's taking place. And there are bridesmaids. 
there are uh, uh, some who are wise, according to the parable, and some who are foolish. And they're waiting for the bridegroom to come. Five wise, five foolish bridesmaids. And, and the difference between the wise and the foolish, of course, is in the end is that the, the, the wise uh, bridesmaids get in because they brought enough oil for their lamps and the foolish ones don't get in because, because they forgot, they didn't bring enough oil. And at the end of the parable, Jesus says, so this is what the kingdom is like. And here's, you know, usually at the end of every parable, there's, there's an explanation where he says, so now this is what you need to learn. He says, stay awake for no one knows. Stay awake for no one knows the hour of the day in relationship to the end of the age. And it's puzzling to me because in the parable, the, the uh, bridesmaids are de defined as some being wise and some being foolish. And the ones who get into the banquet are the wise ones because they brought enough oil. And the other ones didn't bring enough oil, so they're not allowed in the banquet. In fact, at the end of the parable, it, it says that, you know, they're turned away into the outer darkness. And it seems like, wow. Um, but at the end of the parable, the thing we're supposed to learn is we should stay awake. And, and if you read the parable carefully, you see that all ten of them, the wise and the foolish, they all fell asleep. I guess what made the wise ones wise is the fact that they, they brought oil. They had enough oil for the lamps, and the foolish ones were foolish because they didn't have enough oil. Um, and so we have to figure out what makes the oil so significant. Some people would say that, the, have interpreted this parable, say that the oil represents good works. The wise bridesmaids, they did enough good works that they earned their way in, and the, and the foolish ones only did enough. They, they ran out of good works, and, and so they're not allowed in. But that makes no sense, because we know that it's not by works that we're saved. It is by grace we are saved, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So if the oil isn't good, in good works, the oil that should be filling our lamps, what does the oil represent? And I want to say that the oil represents God's Holy Spirit, which of course is a gift. God pours, God pours his spirit into us. And, and so it's not something that we can go and purchase for ourselves, which is the irony of the story. The, the wise didn't have enough because they didn't purchase enough. The oil represents what God has given us. He has poured out his Holy Spirit in abundance upon it. You know, the, there's a Sunday school song, give me oil in my lamp, keep it burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp, keep it burning, keep it burning till the light of day, right? And I think the, the point of this parable is that, that we need to, to make use of the oil that's in our lamps. But oil is only good when it is, when it, it is burning, when it is burning bright, you know? Don't put a lamp under a bushel, don't cover it up. I think this follows in that, in that same vein that what Jesus is wanting us to know that in the kingdom, it's not ours to know the day or the hour, but it's ours to take advantage of all the moments we have to let the light of Christ shine in us. Not to fall asleep and, or, or to, 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 to not use the lamps, the oil that God has given us to, to let the light of Christ shine, but to let the light of Christ shine each and every day. Because we never know when we won't have another chance to be the, the light of Christ shining in the world. Let this Light so shine, we're told in baptism. Let this light so shine in your life that, that you may give thanks, that others may see your good works and give glory to God. It isn't the good works. The oil is, good. The oil is what burns and then it produces the good works of love and grace and mercy and forgiveness. We, never, we don't know what the next age is, is going to be like completely. We have no idea. It's kind of like figuring out what's on Mars. But what we do know is God has loved us now. He has poured out his Holy Spirit upon us, called us to be his workers in his kingdom, to let the oil that's in our hearts and in our lives, the oil of God's Holy Spirit, to burn as we, as we allow his love to flow through us into, in our relationships with other people and his grace and mercy and forgiveness. Let us stay awake so that we can let the light of Christ shine ever more brightly in this dark world. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I invite you to join in singing the hymn of the day for this day, Rejoice, Rejoice, Believers.
We join together now confessing our faith as we share the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Holy God, rouse us to deep praise as we gather for worship. Enliven our worship with sincere and heartfelt song. Sustain the work of all church musicians and artists who lead us in praise and prayer. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy Creator, surprise and delight us with the beauty of the world that you have made. Bless the work of landscapers, architects, and artists whose work invites us into harmonious living with your creation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy Judge, let justice roll down like waters over this world. Reign over the courtrooms of every land, in the hearts of those who guard the law and those who stand accused of crimes. Be present in cases where we long for both justice and mercy to prevail. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy Companion, console those who feel lonely or abandoned. Share the hours of those who live and eat alone. Comfort those who have few friends or who struggle with their identity and place in this world. Sustain those who are hurting in any way, and especially be with those whom we hold in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy Protector, be with all observing Veterans Day. Guard the lives of active duty and retired military personnel. Comfort all who mourn those who have died in the line of duty. Heal the wounds, both physical and mental, experienced by service members. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy and immortal one, we pray in thanksgiving for the lives of all who have died. Remind us of the frailty and shortness of our own lives and inspire us to use them for the building up of your kingdom. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who has also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to join in singing the closing hymn for this day, Blessed Assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit. In his blood, this is my story. This is my song, raising my. 
May the God of all creation in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign, Savior, and Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.